welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I am going to be doing my follow-up vein procedure appointment. I had this on Tuesday, so it's Saturday now. So it's been a few days. Um, quick disclaimer, I am going to be having the microflebectomy on Tuesday, this coming Tuesday. So I will definitely fill you guys in on that um, and let you guys know how that goes and everything like that. So yeah, if you guys want to hear how my follow-up appointment went and what Dr. McNeil said, then let's go ahead and get started. So I had my varicose vein appointment, the follow-up appointment, and um, what happened during this appointment was they took me back and they did another um, ultrasound of the vein just to ensure um, I believe that it was closed um, and that everything you know looked good after the surgery I still had um, pretty intense bruises I still have them almost going into two weeks later um, I still have pretty decent amount of bruising on my leg um, I'm scabbing in the little incisions they're like two little like prong like type they just literally look like you took a pen and like stabbed me with it just the, the tip of it though does that make sense they're just very very minor little micro non-invasive like it says it's very non-invasive they're just like little little scars so um yeah so um I had the venous closure as you guys know and then now um I am having the microphylectomy so with the follow-up after they did the um so the ultrasound they took me into um the room where I met with Dr. McNeil and um you know what he looked at my well first his nurse practitioner I believe that's who she was um she looked at the vein the vein was still protruding it didn't really go down um I believed that Dr. McNeil had um told me that you know because of my age you know it could have gone away with the venous closure but um I was mistaken by that information and it's actually um 100% about of patients who get a venous closure have to get a microphylectomy for their vein and the reason being is that um nine times out of ten it's a two-part process to get the vein going to go away a venous closure basically just goes in and seals the leaking vein so basically it goes in with um you go in with a catheter like that's what he went in with that side of from my thigh over to the other side and you basically apply heat which then closes the vein all the way out so that is um what he did essentially and when doing that it doesn't mean that you're going to lose the bulgingness which i have with my varicose vein um it's very pronounced all the way down my leg um so that doesn't really take care of it what takes care of that is the microphlebectomy that is what is going to take care of the rest of that um so basically like a way that he explained it to me for me to understand is like a leaking roof like when you have a leaking roof you don't um how did he put this i just need to remember this for a second so with a leaking roof the roof starts leaking and then you notice it because you start to see like you know the dip in the ceiling or water starts coming through whatever it may be so then you know that you have a problem you don't really know that you have a problem before something like that happens unless like you're somebody who gets their roof checked point is is that normally you don't know how you have a leak in the roof until after that happens so then what happens is you get the roof fixed well once you close off the leak, which is essentially what we did with the venous closure, is we closed off the leak of the vein. You still have the water and you still need to fix the damage of where the water was coming in in the house. So that's how he explained the microphlebectomy is going to fix the leakingness. It's basically the cleanup after the closure, if that makes sense. I have my sheet of paper that I'm referencing here. So um, that's basically... A good way to put it that's a, a good way to give you guys kind of more of a better exp like um, explanation of it more accurate um you know with my procedure I was just kind of giving you guys my perspective and everything like that I know in my follow-up I would be able to give you more um, professional opinions and more knowledge of actually what it's supposed to do and what it and everything like that so yeah so that is pretty much it so 
that is pretty much it for the venous closure. I mean, it does say that it's going to maybe possibly reduce some of like the appearance of the vein, but it's not going to completely take it away altogether. So if you're looking to get rid of your varicose veins, you're most likely going to have to go through a two-part procedure. You're going to have to go through a venous closure, and then you're going to have to go through a micro microphlebectomy. Now, with the microphlebectomy, um, the way that he described it, and I'm going to state it the way that he described it, and then on Tuesday I will give you, I have another sheet of paper that gives me all the information of the procedure, and I'll give you kind of more of an in-depth, I'm just going to kind of give you a little bit of a piece for what to expect in my coming video on, oh, um, when am I doing that video? <sighs> Sometime the following week, so um, yeah, I'll keep you guys updated with that. So um lost my train of thought. Yes, with the microphlebectomy, basically they'll numb all the way down. This one will actually be done on the side where my vein is. So they'll numb all the way down my vein. He's going to look, I believe, he's going to be able to, I forget how he said he's going to look, but he's going to be able to see with a light, I think, or um, some type of equipment. He's going to be able to see where the protruding veins are and then he's going to go in and make little nicks all the way down my leg and he's essentially going to fix the remaining leak he's going to be able to fix that i believe he's taking the vein out but i don't think that's the right terminology so don't quote me on that i'll be able to give you more information i haven't read that yet um the reason why i'm doing like I read them after if that makes any sense is because I could not fathom to read this and then go get the procedure done like that would freak me out so um like for the purposes of these videos I am reading these after that I hope you guys are okay with that it's just for me I can't I can't like me reading this knowing exactly what he did to my leg now I'm like <sighs> that's intense so yeah I just want to put that out there but basically that's what's going to happen for this one like i had said in my other video the post-op i had to wait until the following morning to take the bandaging and the um compression stocking off this time i have to wait a full 24 hours from the time that i have my procedure until the like 24 hours from that so I'm going to be stinking because my procedure is at 3.30 in the afternoon and I can't take a shower for 24 hours after that. Yeah. It's going to be a little, a little stinky. I think I'm going to have to give myself a sponge bath or something. So, yeah, um, that is what he said that's going to be like. And then I believe within two weeks, the vein will be completely gone. And then I think I have a... Um, follow-up appointment four weeks from that so I will definitely let you know let you guys know how that goes um, I really am excited um, I'm excited to not have pain anymore um, that's what I'm most excited about um, also like I'm just excited to not feel so self-conscious about it but more importantly I'm just happy to not have pain anymore like I'm really excited about that so I mean yes it's it's sucks that I have to have a second procedure but if it's going to take care of it whatever so for me personally with this next procedure i'll just give you guys this piece now because they told me at my last appointment so with this procedure i'm going to be owing around 300 and something dollars will be what i owe now that's probably lower than if you haven't met your deductible because with my last procedure being 1100 11.45 um, I met my deductible for the year with that. Um, that was my remaining deductible and the 20% for the venous closure. So with this one, um, I only owe the 20% and United Healthcare pays the other 80. Um, something to also keep in mind that I did ask, um, Dr. McNeil is that, um, you don't have to get another pre-auth so if your insurance requires a pre-auth you don't have to get a second pre-auth for the microphlebectomy you only usually have to get it for the venous closure and they but it's not for the venous closure they usually do a pre-auth for both at the same time so that's something to keep in mind now something that i want to go over um and also the um after procedure like the days leading up like it's the same thing you need to wear the stocking for three days and then um you can't work out for three days like heavy lifting as well 
Now, when I was in there with Dr. McNeil, I did ask um, the uh, nurse practitioner, I swear that's what she was. If I am incorrect in that, I apologize. Um, but she, I asked her, and then I also asked Dr. McNeil as well, like, is there anything that I can do to prevent not prevent because there's really nothing you can do to prevent them like they're gonna happen nine times out of ten they're genetic you are going to get them but I wanted to know if there was anything that I could do in prolonging um a varicose vein from popping up um I know a couple said factors like I said are your genes um weight um is also another contributing factor so you know from me going from 165 pounds to 225 pounds that could have been the reason why my varicose vein popped out at 25 years old if I was maybe within a good weight range it might have it still would have popped out and it still would have gotten bad it would have maybe just taken a little longer to do so um and also you know standing all the time sitting all the time it just, uh, a way that he described it and, or I don't know if it was her or him. I think it was him. So the way that it was described is your legs are very, like they're very much so against gravity. So your blood, the way that he, Dr. McNeil described it is so like your blood goes down and then through your your blood goes down. I, I took anatomy and physiology, but it's been so long I can't get into that right now. So um, your blood goes down and then your muscles are what brings it back up, essentially. I hope I'm not wrong in that. So um, when it comes back up, I mean, your muscles are what gets it there. So like having really strong calf muscles, being physically active, it's definitely something that's gonna help you out. Something that he really recommended is the compression stockings that I got. So I only got one. I plan to get another one on Tuesday when I go. He stated that when you're sitting for long periods of time to wear the compression stockings. It's really good and they're really beneficial for you. So like for me, I'm fortunate enough that I work from home three days a week. So I will definitely start um, wearing my compression stockings three days a week when I'm working from home. Um, also something that can also cause varicose veins is pregnancy. So when you're pregnant, it will cause them... Sorry guys, that's the dog. Um, it will cause them to kind of appear sooner than maybe they would have. Like I know personally my cousin, she has varicose veins because of her pregnancies and they've caused, caused them to, you know, protrude. And so she's waiting until after she's done having kids to get them taken care of. So um, not that I'm saying that you should wait until after you're done having kids. I mean, they're there, they're there, they should be taken care of because varicose veins can cause blood clots. So it's not something to be taken lightly. Um, so, you know, like I said, um, compression stockings and then the nurse practitioner had said that, you know, you, when you're laying down, you know, make sure that your legs are above your heart rate. So basically she was the one who, who said about the gravity, basically anything that can get your like legs above your heart rate to keep your blood flowing there, it's really going to help. But ultimately your genetics and your weight and pregnancy I mean those might be things that can all cause them to come out it's just a matter of when so the other things that I told you were suggestions of how to maybe prevent them prolong them keep them from coming sooner than maybe they will so I know personally I have decided that the day that I find out that I get pregnant in the next like three years I think yeah yeah in the next three years I plan to be pregnant I will have those compression stockings on the entire time I'm pregnant. I will be sure of that. So <laughs> I know that that will be my thing because I do not want to get any more varicose veins. I do not like at all. Like it scares me the thought that I could get them again. And it could be in different parts of my leg. But yeah, so I just wanted to share those tips with you that I got from Dr. McNeil and Dr. Well, it's Capital Vein and Laser. And, um... If you guys are in the area, I mean, I highly recommend them. They're in um, Frederick, Maryland, Bethesda, Maryland, Ashburn, Virginia, and Rockville, Maryland, I believe. Hold on. Um, 
actually I don't have the card right there so I'm pretty sure that those are those are the locations um I would definitely look into them before I look into um vein clinics of America because Dr. McNeil and Dr. Rosenberg are both board certified surgeons um vascular surgeons so that means being board certified means that that's the um study that's your profession that is what you got your board certified degree in like when you go and you take your boards as a doctor like that's getting you board certified in your interest in what you went to school for so essentially any doctor could get a board certification in like pediatrics or, or not pediatrics like they could get their board certification in anything and then later down the line decide that they want to take up an interest in veins and vascular disease and they can I think that's what it's called I could be like totally blowing this entire video I don't know <laughs> so but they can decide that they have an interest in veins and then they can start doing like vein procedures that doesn't mean I mean you could get somebody at a clinic that's been doing it for two years and so I I like the fact that you know with capital vein and laser Dr. McNeil and Dr. Rosenberg those are the only two doctors in the entire practice and they've been doing this for a over 20 years and it is what they are board certified in so that's just definitely something to keep in mind if you're in the area definitely give them a shout um see you can always have a consultation with them and see if you know it's what's best for you definitely look at my experiences and yeah so if you guys like this video please be sure to give it a thumbs up if you're not already subscribed to my channel please be sure to leave a link or leave a link please be sure to hit the subscribe button down below and i will see you guys in my next one bye guys